add the clips into the timeline, the first clip you see here, which is the one under, is of camera zooming into my eye. And it's very important to get this as perfectly as possible in camera so it'll be easier to edit later. You can see that I am trying to find the point where my eye is opening and that's where I want my transition to happen into this leaf. So what we're gonna do is cut where this transition is happening so we can create a fusion composition and we don't need to render everything around it as well so it's easier on our computer. So select those two, right click and create a new fusion composition. Open the fusion page and let's uncheck everything so that it's easier for us to see what is going where. First we're gonna add another merge node, so we have two merge nodes. We're gonna drag in a background, connect the background to merge 1, then to merge 2 and then to media out. That you can see that by the yellow lines, it's very important that it's yellow because that means it's a background node. Then you can see that the media out, I can choose on which screen I want them to be displayed. I want my media out to be on a second screen and I'm just clicking 1 and 2 on the keyboard to see what the media is. And media 2, the leaf, is going into the merge 1 node and media 1, the eye node, the eye clip, is going to the merge 2 node. And it's important that they, they are green lines connecting to the merge lines. Now make sure that you're on frame 1 and I'm just gonna make this full screen and on media in the eye I'm going to add a ellipse node and invert it. Now we're going to adjust the width and height so it's fitting just around uh, the iris, the black part of the eye. We want the ellipse to cover the iris. So I know that it's about 0 0.04 in width and height. It's obviously gonna be a circle because the iris is a circle. I'm gonna place it over the iris on the first frame. I'm gonna keyframe width and height and I'm going to go to the last keyframe and I'm going to move the ellipse back to the iris and adjust the width and height to 0 0.07. So that way we have animated that scale from beginning it goes from 0.4 to the end where it goes to 0.07. It's easier to do this in the beginning than later because we're gonna now adjust the position of this ellipse frame by frame. So it's nice to have the scale already done. So again go to the first frame, click on the center X and Y, keyframe that and now we're gonna go frame by frame and adjust the ellipse. And as I said, the scale is already adjusted, so we don't need to worry about that. It will cover the whole iris all the time. So I'm gonna speed this up. Okay, nice. So after we're done keyframing the position of the ellipse, we can see that it stays on the iris perfectly. And we have the scale adjusted and we're almost done. What we're going to do now is animate the soft edge slider. Basically it's like opacity, so animating it to go from showing the iris to showing what's under our clip, so showing the leaf in this instance. So on the first frame I don't want to see the leaf, I just want to see the iris. So I'm gonna move the soft edge slider all the way up to 0.2. Then I'm gonna go just a couple of frames forward in time and move the soft edge down to where the background, the leaf, is starting to barely appear. And in this case, it's around 0.4. That way the slider doesn't need to animate the dead space between 0.2 and 0.04, because there's nothing happening there. And then we can just go to the last keyframe and go all the way down on the soft edge to zero. So now if we go frame by frame, we can see that the background is slowly starting to appear and going from nothing to soft to solid. What we're gonna do now is zoom into the eye by clicking and adding a transform node between media and merge. But first we need to adjust the pivot point of the transform node. So click on your transform node and hit tab on your keyboard until you get to the red cross. This is the pivot point of the transform node. And we're gonna go to the first frame and adjust the pivot point and place it on top of our iris and then we're gonna keyframe it. So create a keyframe on the first frame for the pivot point and then again go frame by frame and adjust the pivot point. I'm gonna do it every five frames because I'm lazy and I don't think it's that important for it to be very perfect but try to have it in the center of your eye of the iris. 
yeah. So I'm just gonna do it every five frames. I'm gonna speed this up. That way, when we're scaling in our transform node, we're scaling to where the pivot point is. And it's on the middle of the eye. Perfect. Go to the first frame again and create a keyframe for the size. Go to the end and we're going to scale it all the way up until it covers all of our frame. If your slider is not going as far as you want, you can just type in it manually. I'm just gonna go quickly into the spline tool at the top here and soften the transform size keyframe by either hitting F or clicking this button. So it zooms not linearly, but it starts slowly and then picks up the space and goes through the eye. It's, it's much more nicer. I'm also gonna do it for the displacement so but i'm just gonna do the first and last frame so it's a little bit more smoother gonna close the spline too and now we can see if we go frame by frame that we are zooming through the eye and the leaf is starting to appear nicely what i want to do now is a little bit extra by adding a transform node under the media in one the leaf and i'm gonna scale the leaf up when we zoom in so it's not stationary but kind of zooms in a little bit this is not really necessary for this clip because the leaf is moving side to side but if you have something still or like moving forward it's kind of nice to have this motion so i'm just showing you that you can do it as well but you won't see it that clearly in this specific example i'm also gonna <laughs> adjust the keyframes here because I want it to zoom in and then go back to its original uh, scale. So I'm just gonna adjust the keyframes here of the leaf. So I have, I'm doing, I'm moving it back to frame 50, and at the end I want it to be reset back to one. Uh, <laughs> you don't need to do this. I'm just uh, making it so it looks nicer. So you can see it zooms in until the frame 50 and then goes back to size one at the last frame. And actually one last thing I'm gonna adjust is the size of how much we're scaling in the eye. I don't think 20 was enough because I can still see the edge of the eye. So maybe I'll try 23, 24, ah, 25, let's go 25. So we're sure everything is covering. And one last thing I'm going to do is enable the motion blur on the transform settings so that when the eye zooms in, there's a lot of motion blur on the side, so it looks extra nice. Let's uh, make sure the cache, cache, cache is working and that we render it as well. And this is how it will look. Looks great, I think. So again, it's very important to have this zooming effect in camera. What we did in camera is that I had a person zoomed all the way in on my eye and then the person just zoomed out and then I just reversed it in pose so it looks like it zooms in. And one thing I'm just gonna quickly stabilize this clip. Uh, for some reason that doesn't work. So I'm just gonna hit F on the clip and replace it with the original one quickly here delete the old one now i can stabilize it sometimes da vinci some some things just don't work <laughs> for some reason uh, anyways so this is the result and i really like it hope you understood this tutorial uh, leave a comment if you didn't so that i can improve for the next time i do one of these tutorials all right please subscribe and like this video and i'll see you next one bye